slash radio. That's sunoven.com forward slash radio. 37 things to hoard. Do you have the 37 crucial food items you can't survive without? When the next disaster hits and the mobs go crazy grabbing food off the shelves, you and your family may be without food or waiting in long food lines. Prepare now at 123survivalplan.com. Easy as 123 to remember. 123survivalplan.com. Many people don't have these 37 food items. Learn what you need to hoard now at 123survivalplan.com. Watch the video we've set up for Patriots only at 123survivalplan.com. Get inside information on the 37 food items that will sell out first when the next disaster strikes. This video contains crucial information you and your family need to prepare for any natural or man-made disaster. In the last six months, over 1 million other smart Patriots have already seen this video. Prepare now. Go to 123survivalplan.com and learn which 37 food items you should hoard. Easy to remember, 123survivalplan.com. Again, that's 123survivalplan.com. Uh, how did you come up with The Devil Went Down to Georgia, and how did you come up with the best fiddle, uh, fiddling I've ever heard? Well, I have to disagree about this one best feeling because I don't consider myself that. But the way we came up the other down, down to Georgia is a pretty boring story, actually. We had we had written and re, and rehearsed a whole album's worth of, uh, of songs to go in and do an album. And we got in the studio and, and said, that we need a fiddle tune. I don't know why we didn't discover it before we went in, but we said we need a fiddle tune. So we took a break, moved out of the recording studio into a rehearsal studio and wrote this song. And I don't know where the idea came from. Uh, I just, you know, it was just, uh, I read an old Poem back in high school by Stephen Vespa, and they called the Mountain Whipper Will that had to do with fiddling, and it always impressed me because I was a young fiddle player. If that's where the idea came from, but I got this thing, Devil went down to Georgia, and the guy started chipping in, and here we went. And first thing you know, we went back to the studio and recorded it. So it's that, not a great, I, I wish it was a better story about that, but it's actually not. Well, you could always come out with another one, but. Uh... Let me ask you this then. It's kind of a uh, right stuff question where they say, well, who was the greatest fighter pilot you ever knew? And he was about to say Chuck Yeager, but he said himself. Uh, who do you think is the greatest fiddle player, living or not living? Johnny Gamble uh, is hard to beat. Uh, I know you're familiar with him. Yes. Uh, there's a couple of guys on the opera that are, uh, who's Hester. It's an excellent fiddle player. The best uh, hoedown fiddle player right now, in my opinion, is Earl White, who plays for the square dancers on the Opry. Hoedown fiddle is almost a lost art uh, nowadays because there's, you know people don't square dance that much anymore on a grand scale. And uh, some of the guys that I run into on the road once in a while, some of these young guys are really, really good. I play, kids ask me about playing fiddle. I say, don't look at me. I hold the bow wrong. I hold the fiddle wrong. I put too much pressure on the bow. You know, but that's my style, but it may not work for you. you know, you're running your ball and you're crazy. Don't do it. I don't read music, so I just do it however I want to. All right, I'm going to jam in two more calls, but folks, you've got to just ask your question. We've got to go because we've got about two minutes left here. Uh, let's talk to Charles in Rhode Island. Charles, you're on the air with Charlie Daniels. Greetings and salutations. Hi, Talk show host extraordinaire, freedom friend, uh, Mr. Daniels. Basically, this is my question. Do you really understand the real crux of the situation here? Up until 1951, 90% of people paid income tax. The government did something very smart in making people invest in the government. So, therefore, the mindset is they got to collect that check. Yeah, the question is, do you understand that that's what the real mindset is? That's the kind of uh, I'll put him on hold. Uh, Charlie, he's saying the, the income tax is unconstitutional. We didn't get it until 1913. What's your take on that? Well, you know, I... I don't, I don't mind paying tax. I mean, I don't mind paying, you know, there's no taxes in the jungle, as they always say. I don't mind paying tax, but I don't like paying exorbitant taxes, and I don't. I think we should have a lot more say about how they're spent. Uh, I don't like our I, money I think, being I used against us. Flat, I think we should have a flat tax across the board. And, you know, no deductions, no nothing. The IRS is way too big. Don't need that many people up there doing that. Give us a flat tax. We can figure your own income tax. 10%, okay, fine, here's 10% of this, that, send it in, be done with it. Well, that's the big thing about the income tax is that it, you can go to 50 CPAs, Money Magazine's done this, you get 50 different answers. It's written so they can claim you did something wrong. Uh, Charlie, we've got a minute left. Uh, any any closing comments for America out there listening? I'd just like to say I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting to meet you long distance here, and I've, I've really enjoyed your show, and I, I enjoy talking to you listeners, and you're doing a great work, you know, keep it up, and 
Just to inform, to keep, you know, keep people up with what's going on, and because there's so much stuff that you're not getting on the mainstream media. And let's fight this thing. I mean, you know, I'm here. Y'all are there. Let's, let's just let you, you let your voices be heard today. How you feel. Don't, you know, do it in the local workplace. You're right. Wherever you are, let you're right. Let I mean, be heard. We can do this together. We can turn this country around. Look at you taking time out to fight tyranny. Charlie Daniels, thank you so much, sir, for the time. CharlieDaniels.com. Okay, folks, that's most of the Charlie Daniels interview. The whole thing is posted at InfoWars.com in the podcast area if you want to hear it uh, in its uh, completeness. We're going to go to break and come back with the one, the only Alan Watt with some key information. Stay with us. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds can become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true, seeds have outperformed even... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News on this May 10, 2012 edition, coming up on the show tonight. Tonight, justice will be served. Fullerton police beat Kelly Thomas to death, and now possible charges against third officer. Alex Jones reports. Then, conflict in Syria escalates as more bombs tear through Damascus. Plus, the exclusive premiere of a new powerful documentary released by InfoWars investigative journalist Patrick Henningsen. Open Borders, special report, Fast and Furious. Premieres tonight in its entirety, only on the InfoWars Nightly News. Okay, now we're going to go to a special report by Alex Jones regarding the epidemic of police brutality in America uh, with specific reference to the Kelly Thomas beating and the latest developments in that case. Let's go to this video. Have a 
Well, hey, I'm sick of playing games. Which, 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 playing which one is it? Put your fucking hand on me. Would you just fucking put your hand on me? Infowars.com reported on the brutal beating, torture death of 37-year-old Kelly Thomas, born the same year I was. This is him before. By the way, his father's a retired police officer. He says he's ashamed of what police have turned into in this country. And here he is after. And he didn't resist anything. It was all on video from the police surveillance system. They beat him to death over nine minutes. Dude, please, please, take the guy, dude, I'm sorry. Face down. Face down. A few days ago, they released the video, and we posted it on Infowars.com. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't go watch it. There's so much police brutality, tasering, murder, death. And let me tell you something, folks. I could barely watch this. The cops are getting off on it. They play the game of saying don't move while they, I'm going to taser you in the belly. Okay. Here, dude. Here, just come. Please stop. Please stop, dude. Please stop. 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 Please you see, they've upped the power of tasers. They know that in the internal literature, all these systems are called less lethal. So they just train the public that they're basically able to uh, torture us and then even kill us. It's all pain, pain compliance. And they're training police and all this and just normalizing it. This is what they're going to turn loose on everybody. And they're trying to get all the cops to become these demon creatures. And it is, it is, it is really disgusting. Uh, and the culture of just worshiping police no matter what is what has allowed this. Now, they're charging one cop with second-degree murder, another with manslaughter. No, folks, this is torture. And the, probably the only reason these guys are even getting charged is that the guy's dad was is a retired, well-known police officer in the area and spoke out. And they're like, well, since your son was a son of a god, an upper-class you know, minion of the New World Order, we're going to do something about it. Now, more cars arrive, and it's just the beating with the batons. Well, you saw the damage, just the, the enjoyment. The piranha, or, or, or really what I'd call the orgy-type uh, feeding frenzy of the sharks, it's pretty bad. Now, the begging for daddy's coming up. And then he begins sobbing like a child for daddy. That's what people do generally before they pass out and well then later die. And the police are really enjoying it and getting off on it. I've seen footage and videos, it's in my film, Martial Law, where they're breaking uh, pro-lifers' arms. So there's the face of the New World Order. And they killed this guy. And then after they've pretty much killed him, you know, he died later at the hospital. When he's laying there, there's blood pouring out in all directions. They all basically act like they want to have a cigarette, like they just had sex or something. I mean, there's a real satisfaction congratulating each other coming up. So, you know, they've gone out and bagged a trophy. A homeless guy hadn't done anything wrong. Uh, who, by the way, was mentally ill. And they reportedly said he was uh, schizophrenic. That's why he was on the streets. And uh, there's just a lot of begging for daddy here, and that really gets them excited. And you can turn the audio up and hear like the little grunts and satisfactions, and the cops are all having adrenaline and getting up and walking around in circles. I mean, this was a fun kill right here. This felt really good. And this is what all tyranny set up. Yeah. How do you want to pull this down? 
So he's got together already in the front. He's got yeah. yeah. him in the front. Okay. The best way I can come. Because of the fight. I say, wait, I don't want to take those he's off. He's still going to fight. Yeah. Yeah. He's so fine, dude. Relax. 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 Okay. So what's, what's this guy's name? He's got a round to his... 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 Relax. Relax. Oh, we got... We fold his legs up. Wait, wait, you want to do that? Sure, sure, sure. Relax. Okay, just want to sleep. He's still fighting. Okay. Let's put him in the front, though. Can you get, you can, can you hook that right here on the front? Yeah, let me get some gloves out and I'll get you. The chain's right there. Okay. Right. I see him right here. Which way did you wrap these? Relax. You know, my grandfather worked in uh, less lethal weapons development. Uh, developed a uh, taser robot, a, rem a remote control system. Sold, sold to the Pentagon. They never mass developed it, but they were told to call it non-lethal. This was back in the 60s. Uh, but they know they're, they're lethal. And that's what it's all about. They just train us with rubber bullets and all the rest of it and kill people all the time. They're just getting everybody ready for it. And then you talk back, they use it on you. And it's all about all these people that crave authority getting into these positions. And again, the begging for daddy just goes on and on. This made me sick watching it. But you know, uh, for him, he, he got to die quickly though. Not like all these kids that, uh, you know, the formula is more than half corn syrup and the diabetes exploding or the cancer viruses and the vaccines or the way the globalists kill us. Because, see, these guys like to kill people there on the ground. The Rockefellers and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they like to do it real slow through soft kill. And, you know, all these cops are taking soft kill. See, there's bigger, badder demons than you boys up above you. And it's all about their, their, their force continuum. Well, he didn't comply properly. They gave him an order to put it, you know, hands on his head, hands on his knees. He said, which one? The guy said, that's it. You see my fist? I'm going to F you up. Get on the ground. He gets on the ground, and the murdering starts. Ha, ha, yeah. Oh, it's so good to be a psychopath in America and get to torture people to death. Just like Abu Ghraib, the Army's own reports where they rape children in front of their parents. And people have been defending that. Well, not me. I don't want any part of it, any part of your demonic New World Order or fetal parts, fetal tissue in the Pepsi or the cosmetics. I don't want any part of it. All right, America, you want an evil? You're going to be judged by it. I, to be quite honest, I can't even watch the entire thing. I've watched pieces of it. It is, I watched about 90% of it. It is unbelievable. We'll post this video and the full video up at Infowars.com. But I guess we need to start watching more of this because I, I, this was out like four or five days ago and I just couldn't look at it. But I made myself this morning and it shook me to my core. Alex Jones signing off for Infowars.com. <laughs> So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the epidemic of police brutality continues apace. Um, uh, basically, I know that at every major summit now in whatever country you go to, there's police brutality, but just in terms of routine, day-to-day -day thuggery, it seems that America takes the biscuit over every other country. I mean, police in Britain and Western countries, of course, there's a lot of corruption and false arrests. Uh, but just the brutal beatdowns and unrepentant thuggery, as you saw there with that example of Kelly Thomas, 
Uh, there's a story from the US about it almost every day, and we know why it is, partly because basically the police in America are being trained that the population is the enemy, not just the criminals now, but because everybody is guilty until proven innocent, um, the view has shifted, whereas now they treat us all as potential enemies, specifically in America. That's why we're seeing such an epidemic of police abuse. And I just find it interesting. I mean, you know, where's Amnesty International? Where's Human Rights Watch? These organizations will tell you all day about minorities being persecuted in foreign countries, but I haven't seen them address once the epidemic of police brutality within America itself. So, I mean, we need to acknowledge that this is a major problem and that it's, you know, it's most rife in America, but these top human rights organizations just really don't have a lot to say about it. Moving on to our next story on InfoWars Nightly News. Syria conflict, Damascus bomb increases pressure on UN. This is out of BBC News. The bombings that tore through Damascus on Thursday morning were the sixth terrorist attack to have struck the city since December. And basically, you've got 55 dead. This is the worst act of violence since the tensions in Syria began. And who's behind it? Well, it's the same Al-Qaeda terrorists that helped NATO overthrow Gaddafi in Libya. They now fly the Al-Qaeda flag over Syria. This is the very same Al-Qaeda terrorists that Hillary Clinton says are on the same side as the United States and the NATO powers in Syria. Uh, so while we're being propagandized, you know, about Al-Qaeda underwear bombers, the terrifying deadly plot, which turns out to be the work of a CIA informant, the real Al-Qaeda is doing NATO's dirty work in Syria, while the mainstream media is still portraying these rebels who are being directed by terrorists as defenseless demonstrators. And I made a video earlier today for YouTube where basically I point out that yet again, the London Guardian and a lot of the other mainstream media has handed over, just willfully handed over its 24 hour rolling news coverage to anonymous activists with Twitter accounts who claim with no evidence that these bombings are false flag staged events carried out by Assad's regime itself to demonize the rebels. So, you know, I get it. When we have actual hardcore evidence for false flag attacks launched by the US government, for example, such as the Christmas Day underwear bomber, you know, helped onto the plane, well-dressed man, uh, CIA ordered him to be let through despite the fact that he had no passport, was on a terror watch list. When we talk about false flag attacks and point the finger at Western governments, it's a thought crime. But when, you know, Syrian activists with dubious anonymous Twitter accounts do it, they're just handed the front page of The Guardian and major global newspapers. <laughs> you know, the, the dangerous 9-11 truthers and their nutball conspiracy theories are all marginalized when it's about terror attacks in the West. Um, but apparently, so I'm told, um, false flag attacks only occur in Middle Eastern nations that are the target of NATO regime change. Isn't that a coincidence? So basically, <laughs> you've got The Guardian handing over its entire news coverage to these Twitter anonymous Twitter activists who claim it's all a false flag. Because, of course, the terrorists carrying out the bombings are NATO-backed, NATO-funded, NATO-transported, airlifted them in from Libya. Um, and on top of that, we've got these tweets now from Ambassador Susan Rice, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. And she's come out with a couple of tweets. The first one is, quote, bombings also remind us of the urgent need for a political solution in Syria before it is too late. So she's seizing on bombings committed by NATO-backed, U.S.-backed al-Qaeda terrorists as a justification for NATO military involvement. That's, that's pure terrorism carrying out the attacks and then using them for political point scoring. And listen to this. This is another tweet from Ambassador Rice. The longer Assad clings to power, the greater the risk of destabilization in Syria and throughout the region. So she's basically threatening more destabilization. She's, she's basically saying, yeah, you're going to get bombed some more. Hope you enjoy it. And it's just brazen terrorism. She's claiming that these bombings make it you know, grease the skids even more for a NATO military assault, and it's the NATO-backed terrorists who are behind the bombings. But not if you're the Guardian when it's all a false flag, wild conspiracy theory. 
which is how they normally characterize false flags. But because anonymous, dubious Twitter users are saying it, you know, it's the height of credibility. Normal rules do not apply. Moving on, on InfoWars Nightly News, group that admitted manufacturing global warming threat still pushes same hoax. PrisonPlanet.com story. And basically, I, our old friends in the global warming alarmist movement are up to their old tricks once again. The secretive Club of Rome has issued a report entitled 2052, a global forecast for the next 40 years, which decries improving living standards in developing countries and warns that man-made climate change could eventually kill off humans entirely. So who is the Club of Rome? Well, it's similar to the Bilderberg Group. It's a collection of power brokers. They don't meet very often like Bilderberg do annually, but they put out reports like this one, uh, warning us that if we don't pay carbon taxes to Al Gore and Marie Strong, both Club of Rome members, that, you know, the sky is going to fall in. Global warming is going to wipe out humanity. And why it's rich, and I mean, this, of course, this is what the mainstream media has failed to report and point out in each one of these articles about this new Club of Rome report. Basically, they're calling for a new system of, of governance, global governance, enforcing eco-fascism on the back of fears about rising temperatures. But this is the very same group, the same organization who in their 1990 report, the first global revolution, openly admitted that they had manufactured the idea, the quote idea, to use global warming uh, as a means of creating this fake outside threat of eco-apocalypse. And this is the direct quote from the report, which you can read in the article. Quote, in searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like, would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. And this passage appears under a subheadline entitled, quote, the common enemy of humanity is man. So basically, that's them admitting that they manufactured this phony threat to make mankind the enemy. And now they're going to punish mankind by enforcing this uh, draconian global government in the name of saving the planet. So again, you know, even as the science discredits uh, the global warming alarmists, just as it discredited the Paul Ehrlichs and John P. Holdrens of the world when they were fear-mongering about a, a deadly new ice age back in the 70s, uh, the modern-day climate change alarmists are being discredited once again by the very science. You know, polar bear populations exploding, emperor penguins exploding, ice sheets thickening, bearing sea ice thickening, Himalayas ice thickening. The temperature is in fact getting colder and they're once again fear-mongering about rising temperatures requiring the need for a new global government and a carbon tax. When they were the ones who admittedly said, we're going to create this fake scare and blame it on humanity to get this power. So, you know, just pay your carbon tax to Al Gore and Marie Strong and everything will be okay. They'll save the world. Farage, we face the prospect of mass civil unrest in Europe. PrisonPlanet.com story once again, MEP and UKIP leader Nigel Farage, who of course is a regular Alex Jones Show guest, gave a stirring speech yesterday in front of the EU Parliament during which he won of mass civil unrest in Europe while vocally denouncing the very EU policies which are causing that unrest. And we've got the clip of the speech, so let's roll the clip. But like communism, this has all gone badly wrong. And the EU Titanic has now hit the iceberg. It is a European Union of economic failure, of mass unemployment, of low growth, but worst of all, it's an EU with the economic prism of the Euro. We cannot do it if we're asked to rally behind that flag. I owe no allegiance to that flag, and nor to most of the people in Europe either. And Farage is by no means alone in warning of this massive civil dislocation in Europe as a result of this Euro crisis, which of course, as we know in recent days, has deepened because of uh, the promises by the new uh, Greek radical left leader uh, who's attempting to form this anti-bailout coalition. So it's all heading south once again. But 
Do we remember the report about the uh, British government warning their embassies in Europe to prepare for the safe evacuation of British expats in the aftermath of a euro currency collapse? Remember that report in The Telegraph? They were talking about people not being able to withdraw cash, no access to bank accounts if the single currency collapsed. We also had the top US military commander, General Martin Dempsey, back in December, uh, saying he was concerned that the United States could be exposed to the collapse of the eurozone as well quote because of the potential for civil unrest and breakup of the union and this is all coming to uh coming to the fore once again in recent days so basically because these eurocrats are desperate to cling on to their pet project which is the euro single currency which of course was hatched by the bilderberg group which itself created the eu back in 1955, decades before it was officially proposed in the Maastricht Treaty, uh, because they would rather see chaos and bloodshed on the streets of Europe than allow this uh, kind of orderly collapse of the Eurozone. They're only creating the toxic environment for a more disorderly collapse at some later date. And uh, just another fantastic stirring speech by Nigel Farage of UKIP, who is one of the very few MEPs taking on the authoritarian, dictatorial European Union. Scientific Go City to test future technology. This is out of Yahoo News. The world first $1 billion scientific Go City will be built in New Mexico to test the latest next generation technology. Researchers will use the facility at Lay County near Hobbs to look at everything from intelligent traffic systems and next generation wireless networks to automatic washing machines and self-flushing toilets. How very convenient. No one will live there, although they could be, they're going to be houses with all the necessities like appliances and plumbing. So basically they're building this huge $1 billion clandestine city um, where the appliances and infrastructure will be tested behind closed doors. And of course, this is the place where the Internet of Things, hailed by CIA chief David Petraeus as the you know new great dawn of surveillance, this is where all these little appliances for clandestine statecraft are going to be tested. This is where the IntelliStreet light poles uh, that also have homeland security applications are going to be honed to spy on your conversations as they bragged they could as you walk down the street. So basically, it's all about beta testing big brother in this one billion dollar secret uh, ghost scientific city next story on infowars nightly news soylent pepsi is people it's considered business as usual the obama administration has ruled there is nothing wrong with using aborted human fetus tissue to flavor pepsi dead babies for profit were also recently discovered by customs officials in china where corrupt medical staff are said to be tipping off medical companies when babies are aborted or delivered stillborn, according to the Daily Mail. So, I mean, did we really need another reason not to drink Pepsi? <laughs> I mean, why on earth is anyone with half a brain still drinking Pepsi or any kind of soda when it's laden with aspartame, which we know from the studies done on rats, uh, has the carcinogens which increase the risk of cancer? So, you know, if you're still drinking Pepsi and the knowledge that it contains human baby tissue, then I'm sorry, but you deserve everything that Aspar same has to offer. Uh, remember the story a few weeks ago, the woman who died from drinking soda, uh, 10 litres of Coke a day. So I guess this is just like the uh, zombie equivalent of brains to some people. I mean, they have to guzzle the Aspar same. It's very nutritious for them. So, you know, if, if you're stupid enough to play in traffic, then you deserve to get run down. Uh, the, the information is freely available that not only is soda and Pepsi and Coke laden with this carcinogen, but now it also contains the nutritious aborted baby tissue. Yum, yum. Glug away. So now we're going to go on to our quote of the day on Infowars Nightly News from 17th century French political historian Alex de Tocqueville. And he said this, quote, democracy and socialism have nothing in common but one word, equality. But notice the difference. While democracy seeks equality in liberty, socialism seeks equality in restraint and servitude. But, you know, apparently with Obama and Biden, where 
we're going forward. We're going forward into a brave new Marxist world. Uh, and if you don't like the brand of socialism that they've got to offer, uh, then we've got another four years of Trotskyite neocon conserved conservatives as the alternative. What a choice that is, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, forward together with Obama and Biden. And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I would again urge you to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, of course, prisonplanet.tv is where InfoWars Nightly News is streamed live along with all the other exclusive multimedia content. So that's going to wrap it up for today. I've been your host, Paul Joseph Watson, and we'll see you on the next edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use does doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. I'd like to thank Paul Joseph Watson for covering the news portion and, um, and Alex Jones for also sending in that report on Kelly Thomas. Uh, right next to me now, I have Patrick Henningsen, who's a writer and contributor to InfoWars.com, and we're about to release a uh, special report that he produced. It's called Open Borders Special Report on Fast and Furious. And with that, Patrick, how are you doing? I'm good, Rob. Thank you very much. So tell us about this report. Who did you interview? What kind of information did you uncover? You were letting me in on some stuff behind the scenes, but it sounds very interesting. Yeah, originally I, I entered this uh, through um, the Sheriff Joe Arpaio's investigation of Obama's documents, birth documents and social security number. And when we did that report with Rob Jacobson, when Rob came down, um, I met uh, a number of people in the it connected with the government here. And uh, I was originally looking at uh, doing a story on SB 1070, which is the federal lawsuit that DOJ has slapped on the state of Arizona for enforcing its own immigration laws. And uh, through this uh, story that I did on SB 1070, I learned um, that there are quite a few people uh, in the government here that have intimate knowledge of Operation Fast and Furious. And so uh, that kind of uh, grew out of that. And I met uh, a congressman who is uh, Carl Seals, very helpful um, and very generous with his time. And also he's he then referred me on to uh, the ranking senator in the state legislature uh, and another senator as well. And uh, they kind of told me the inside scoop on Fast and Furious. And I've, I've, I've recorded some interviews with them. And also I spoke to um owner of a, a gun shop it's at the center of the fast and furious investigation i'm not going to say his name but anybody following the story probably knows who i'm talking about but he wasn't able to speak uh because he's under currently on federal subpoena um apparently there are big things afoot in the next few weeks or the next month with regards to fast and furious and uh that was told to me by the owner of that gun shop um and also uh We've also got, you know, uh, the, the, the situation of Fast and Furious, it's affected Arizona directly, um, not just crime in the, in the Phoenix area and along the border, 
um, but it's also affected uh, it, people have lost their lives basically here. And that's the main thing I wanted to get across in this film. I haven't found a, a comprehensive report on Fast and Furious when I was doing my research. So I decided that I'm going to make a, a comprehensive report on the origins of Fast and Furious and also what is the agenda behind it. And it's not just a theory. There's this theory that by some people that the government is incompetent, that the federal government is just incompetent. That is a... Uh, no. We, That's, we have yeah. the memos. We have, we've seen the memos. Uh, CBS reported on them that they deliberately, they were looking for stories to go against the Second Amendment to create that demonization process. Now, exactly. now let me ask you this. Did you cover the fact that Bush was doing this before and that this goes all the way back to even the Reagan administration when they were shipping guns for drugs and doing all this with Iran-Contra? Did you start there or did you just start with Fast and Furious? As no, well... I started with Operation Wide Receiver, okay. which was which was hatched in 2007 under Roberto Gonzalez, mm -hmm. and uh, that was gun walking. Um, I didn't go back further than that because I wanted to keep this uh, to a short uh, length of a film. I can I have enough material to do a 45 minute or a one hour documentary, uh, and I think I'll probably uh, work on that. Um, uh, in the next few weeks. But uh, yeah, Operation Wide Receiver uh, was different than Fast and Furious because Operation, Operation Wide Receiver required federal agents to keep an eye, keep an eye on the guns uh, as they tracked them over the border into Mexico and also required the feds to coordinate with the Mexican authorities in, in, at least to try to apprehend or to break uh, gang activity and, and cartel crime. Operation Fast and Furious has got none of that. And I kind of really illustrate that clearly in my film. And also I've got highlights of all the really good congressional testimonies that I was able to get uh, from C-SPAN, who gave me permission to use those as well. Uh, and also um, we've got uh, the senators in, in this state, you know, these aren't, this isn't your normal breed of politician. And this is the thing that really surprised me is these are, I don't want to use the cliche, but these are real patriots working down here who whose chief concern is their constituents and their citizens and guarding the liberties of the residents of Arizona. And they came out on camera and set and spelled it exactly what it is. Right. No, minc no mincing words that this is a conspiracy by the federal government to to gin up opposition, in the words of Senator Gould, to demonize the Second Amendment and to restrict gun ownership in the second term of Obama. Sure. So now, this, is, this isn't something we're talking about, Rob. This is something that the, the, the highest ranking members of the state government in Arizona are saying publicly. Well, are they planning on pressing any charges or filing anything in court to, uh, against you know, Eric Holder and the Department of Justice? Is that even possible? Can we, can we file charges against the Department of Justice for doing this? Well, Daryl Ice has brought a, uh, everyone knows by now Daryl Ice has brought a contempt uh, charge against Eric Holder. I mean, he's been proven to be lying. I've, I've got I've got his testimonies against uh, backed up against the CBS reports to show that he is a liar. Right. And, and also I also said um, uh, revealed also that the White House uh, intimidated CBS into dropping Fast and Furious coverage last year. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're involved in bullying with the media to try to kill um, investigation into what is a completely failed operation that is actually illegal on, on its face, it's illegal. I would uh, like to see the state of Arizona file charges against Eric Holder personally and drag his butt down there for questioning and grill him, because that's what they need to do, because they're not doing that job in Congress. Issa is doing a whitewash, honestly, because he knows that they did it under Bush, and he's just... He's just kind of playing the field, oh, oh we're going to keep this a left and right paradigm thing when they're both sides are doing it. And that's what really pisses me off. Well, the, the thing is, um, they did it under Bush, but they, they at least had some accountability in that operation. This one here is, is, has no other function, no other function other than to demonize gun owners and also to restrict the, the purchase of firearms in the border states, particularly Arizona and Texas. And both those states have very liberal gun laws. And, you know, as Senator Gould said, we can't forget that, you know, as Americans, we have the right, if we own property, we have the right to sell property to each other. And that includes gun shows. So they're trying to use uh, Fast and Furious to create. And this is also something else, Rob. I had a senator lecturing on camera 
what Hegelian dialectic is. Oh wow! Yeah, and how and how it applies <laughs> to Fast and Furious. And I was just I couldn't believe I was hearing this, and I thought, wow, you know, I, I don't I don't often feel um, really proud of the public servants, but when I heard Senator Gould talking about this, I, I felt proud that we had people in the state legislature who think like this and who are this have this level of political awareness right. and aren't going to be hoodwinked by uh, what is clearly a federal government out of control. And I said this at the end of the film, I said, this is a federal government that's out of control. And at some point, the child uh, thinks it's become the parent. And that's what's really, what that's the big theme here is, is, is the state's sovereignty. And the original contract with the Constitution, the 50 states, uh, gave limited powers to the federal government. And now we have a federal government that's now become a national government. And this is the main point of the film that I hope people get. And this is what was said by the senators. We've gone from a federal government to a national government. And can you can you believe what the, the, the implications of that and the reality of that is that is the of uh, the you know the baby steps towards a complete totalitarian socialist state. Well, if you, if you look around you, that's what most of the slobs want. They want to be taken care of. They want government to take care of them and provide for them from cradle to grave. And it's unfortunate that we're seeing that more and more and that we actually have to speak up to get the rights that were granted to us under the Constitution and under God, you know, frankly. Let's go to the gun owner. You talked you talk to the gun owner. You didn't talk to him on camera, but you relayed, um, you know, parts of what you had in your conversation. What, what was he telling you? Well, he couldn't speak to me very much because uh, he's under FBI surveillance, and this this is what the Department of Justice does. They've got their lip. They've got the, they're using the FBI politi politically to to spy on witnesses on a big up what is going to be a big case, uh, which is in the works right now regarding indictments. And th there might there might be indictments. Uh, he didn't say specifically, but he said he said I'm not going to say anything. But just there's going to be big big developments in this month of May with regards to Fast and Furious, but, you know, he was nearly put out of business by uh, the ATF's little operation. Um, and, you know, it's it's honest, hardworking Americans just trying to run a business. And here they've got the federal government involved uh, on, on, on a deep level in basically trying to um, entrap and also uh, do the worst thing possible, which is arm criminal cartels over the border. Mm -hmm. Uh, with 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 guns and you know and also the other thing my film spells out clearly and I took clips from the White House um, SPP uh, meeting with Calderon and Obama in May, which is that they tried to they're trying to make this fallacy that this that it's American guns that are you know getting into the hands of the Mexican cartels and it's a total lie. I've outlined it from A to Z in the film. So I wanted to make a film that if someone didn't know about Fast and Furious, they can watch this and get up to speed and see what the real issues are. And I think I've, I've achieved that with this 20 minute film. But the other thing, Rob, I'm gonna say is, um, I, I've never uh, edited a film before. So this is my first, my first one. I, I taught myself with free software. I used a handheld HD camera. Uh, I had a, a very inexpensive lapel microphone wireless system. And I did this on free software. And I, the reason I did it is because I want to also demonstrate to people out there in the info war that you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need to have heavy equipment or even the best software. Now, if I, if I redo this film, I might do it on Premiere or Final Cut Pro. But this version, I wanted to show what you can do. So there's no barrier to getting into the info war. You can make a really good film that's better than anything Michael Moore makes. <laughs> Um, How dare you get off your butt and do something productive? Yeah. How dare you? And so this is an example of this film. This is my first my first go at a film, and I think it came out pretty well. And also, it, it's just to show that you can do this with little or no resources. Money should not come into the issue in the info war. So look at this film, anybody watching it, and say, right, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do something similar. I was The doors were open for me. They right. invited me into the state government, Rob. Well, talk about they're this. looking for people to talk to about this. Yeah, you know, they're, they're dying to talk to, uh, talk about it. I got two final questions here. Did the gun owner know he was part of Fast and Furious when it was he's, taking place? He's the gun shop owner, Rob. The gun shop owner. Yeah. Did he was he aware that he was part of this operation? 
he was. He he was he was basically uh, he had illegal um, straw man purchasers come into the shop buying loads of uh, semi automatics and so forth. And he and it red flagged immediately. Some of them had criminal records. Yeah. Huh. Okay. And, and and so the and he calls up the FBI or the ATF and they say no 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 sell him the guns sell him the guns. What? They, yes. And I've, got, <laughs> I've got all this on camera. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, this has been rec recounted by the senators. Yeah. No, it wasn't from the gun shop owner, but right. this is to show people the level, the level of crime that we're looking at with Fast and Furious. This scandal on is threatens the Obama administration more than any other scandals, and Lord knows he's got his share. Oh okay? yeah, yeah. But th and but this one, this one doesn't involve bribery or Watergate lying or corruption. No, no, no. This involves lives. The men have died in the line of duty, and these are good men. They have families, and this is a direct result of Fast and Furious. And that's a, another big hammer I hit home at the end of the film. This isn't about uh, Watergate uh, tapes or lying or bribery or corruption. No, no, no. This is about lives. Right. No, and, and two lives in particular: Judge Roll and and Congresswoman Giffords. Well, I did you I, did you go into that as uh, talk to them about that being a possible assassination attempt because they were investigating Fast and Furious together? I spoke about that uh, to one member of the government, and he didn't have much forthcoming information on it. So I kind of realized that that trail is not going to go anywhere right now. But I'm going to revisit that trail later, Rob. I've also got invitation by by the DPS to go down in an, in an armed escort along the border and film. Uh, if I want to take this to another level, um, so that's a little caveat. But you know, the, the, the Gabby Everly Giffords judge roles thing uh, definitely is going to be looked into. But also, we've got Rob Krentz, rancher who was who was shot and killed on the border. Right. Uh, this is linked with Fast and Furious and uh, uh, Pinal Sh uh, Pinal County Sheriff's Deputy Louis Parole, who was wounded by AK-47 fire. Three AK-47 gunmen triangulated and fire on a sheriff's deputy. He was rescued within an inch of his life. Okay, this is some serious stuff going on down there. And it's in, and the people in Washington, personally, I don't think they're serious. They don't really care. They just care about their political agenda, which is to demonize gun owners, to demonize private property, and to demonize the Second Amendment. That's, that's their chief concern. They don't care about the lies. And collect payoffs from the special interests. Don't forget that. Patrick, thanks for doing this film. We're going to premiere right now. We appreciate your hard work, and uh, I guess you're heading off to England, so we'll see you uh, next time. It'll be over the pond. Yep, definitely. All right. Thanks, Rob. And with that, we're going to have the premiere of, it is called Open Border Special Report, Fast and Furious. This is a, a good primer to send to your friends, spread it around, watch it, um, take notes. Do your own research. Um, Wayne Madsen was the one who uncovered this Judge Roll Gabby Giffords link, and I and I really think this could. My gut tells me that that that's part of the uh, part of the triangle of what we have going on here with government buying guns, shipping them down to Mexico, and then blaming it on the Second Amendment. And with that, we're going to go to the film, uh, and that's all for our show today. After that, and uh, I'm Rob Dew, and this is Infowars Nightly News. And thank you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member. It's very easy to do. You go to prisonplanet.tv. We have a 15-day free trial. It's very easy to do. Help us out. Help us spread the word. If you can't get a membership, maybe get your friend to get a membership. And, you know, you can share your passcode with up to six people. So there you go. That's all we have for today. We're going to go to the movie now. Uh, Open Borders Special Report, Fast and Furious. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. We have two Border Patrol agents who are dead, who were killed by guns that were allowed, as far as we can tell, to deliberately walk out of gun shops under the program often called Fast and Furious.
Did you ever approve or sanction investigations that allowed gun walking? No, not to my knowledge. Now that you've been briefed on it, the President has said on March 22nd that you didn't authorize it. Did your Deputy Attorney General James Cole authorize it? I'm sorry, did the, the Deputy Attorney General James Cole? Did he, I, did, I didn't hear, did he? We have a dead Border Patrol agent in Agent Terry. We have 2,000 missing guns. We have 200 deaths in Mexico. We had dead government officials in Mexico. We have a Mexican helicopter with, with troops in it that shot, three of which are wounded, uh, back in May of this year. We have 50-plus members of Congress calling for your resignation over this, and you've never spoken to any one of these people about this operation. I think it's very important to recognize that you as the Attorney General, with all due respect, need to be held accountable, or someone does, as to what happened. Uh, you know, I should be held accountable for sure, certainly my role uh, in whatever I did or didn't do in connection with the supervision of Fast and Furious, but yeah, I'm Attorney General of the United States and I should also be held accountable and perhaps even given some credit. I'm this program, as you know, and the President's been asked about it, you've been asked about it, allowed for weapons to be sold to straw purchasers, and ultimately, many of those weapons are today in the hands of drug cartels and other criminals. When did you first know about the program, officially, I believe, called Fast and Furious? To the best of your knowledge, what date? I'm not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. This was the lie that made U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder the focus of Fast and Furious investigations. Documents obtained by CBS News prove that Holder lied, but their veteran reporter, Cheryl Atkinson, soon became a target of the White House, who attempted to intimidate the network into dropping their coverage of Fast and Furious, believing it should remain above the law, even in the face of damning evidence of their illegal operation, an operation conveniently hidden inside President Obama's 2009 stimulus bill, and an operation that flooded the Mexican black market with thousands of illegally obtained firearms. The first incarnation of federal gun walking was hatched in 2007 under the watch of then Attorney General Roberto Gonzalez through Operation Wide Receiver. But that operation required federal agents to track firearms into Mexico and worked with Mexican security services to trace guns and apprehend cartel criminals. Unlike Fast and Furious, which had no tracking, no tracing, and no real objectives. In what can only be described as a federal government appearing to partner with organized crime in Mexico. As a result, the violence has increased on both sides of the border since Fast and Furious went live in 2009. In April 2010, Pinell County Sheriff's Deputy Louis Parole was shot and wounded by AK-47 fire, but was rescued, narrowly escaping with his life in an incident that prompted one of the largest manhunts in state history involving some 200 officers from multiple agencies. Rob Krentz, Skion of one of the Southwest's most well-known ranching families was shot and killed on March 27, 2010, most likely by traffickers who were using his land to mule narcotics over the Mexican border and into the country, as is captured by these hidden cameras along some of Arizona's most well-known smuggling routes. ICE Special Agent Jamie Zapata, assigned to human smuggling and trafficking, was gunned down in cold blood in February 2011 whilst in the line of duty and traveling in Mexico. And DHS border agent Brian Terry, a member of the BORTAC unit, was shot and killed on December 14, 2010, northwest of Nogales. And the gun recovered at the scene was traced directly back to Operation Fast and Furious. InfoWars traveled to Arizona, to the state capitol, to speak to senators and congressmen about the details of Fast and Furious, and also to discover 
the real agenda lurking behind the operation. Uh, the Fast and Furious incident with this whole thing, what brought that to light was one of the weapons used to kill Agent Terry was one of the guns that was sold uh, as part of the gun walking program that the um, uh, US, U.S. Attorney uh, General and the ATF were involved with, uh, where they were selling guns uh, to people that were known criminals who failed an FBI background check where the flag, the gun dealer, the gun owner said, hey, this guy comes up bad and the FBI said sell it to him anyways, sell him the gun anyways, even though they knew that this was a bad sale. They uh, had people that violated the law that uh, they essentially bought weapons that were in an illegal straw man transfer and then um, lost track of those if they ever had the ability to even track them at all um, as they were sold into the uh, crime syndicate. In the previous uh, stings that were done by the federal government, the agents were required to main, maintain eyes on the firearms and not let the guns out of their sight. In this particular episode, they were buying lots of guns and just flooding the illegal market with these guns and not actually tracking the guns. So a lot of these guns crossed into Mexico and the agents, no one knew where they were. And in this particular episode, uh, those bandits that uh, encountered Agent Terry were carrying some of those firearms that were bought and transferred to them during the uh, uh, Fast and Furious uh, operation. Uh, you know, the, uh, we talk about the gun owner, or the gun store owner here in Arizona that had raised the red flag and actually tape recorded a conversation with the FBI and ATF over the phone where he had said, hey, look, I don't think I should sell this firearm. And they're telling him, you need to sell the firearm. And he said, no, I don't think I should sell it. And they said, well, we're, we're telling you to sell the gun. Well. Uh, the guy sells the gun, and then a couple weeks later, they come in and uh, raid his store and get all his records and try to make it look like he was the bad guy, that, and they were going to try to pin it on him that he had sold these illegal guns to these illegal, uh, what we call prohibited p possessors. And during that effort, he was able to bring up this phone call and provide, and then, of course, they backed off. But the ATF went in there and raided his store to try to make it look like he had been illegally selling firearms when in fact he had covered himself luckily uh, with a tape recorded uh, telephone call to cover his rear end and, and it's fortunate for him had he not done that the ATF would have gone after him shut his business down and probably thrown him in jail uh, so th this is part of the effort and I think it's wrong uh, you know you take a guy trying to do an honest day's work and then you keep enticing him enticing him enti until eventually the guy you know reaches his point where he gets sucked in Here in the United States, we've increased cooperation on our uh, southern border and dedicated new resources to reducing the southbound flow of money and guns. Clearly, I expressed it to President Obama and to Prime Minister Harper that the fight that Mexico is experiencing for a safer North America also requires a strengthening of national actions, amongst other things, uh, to stop the traffic of weapons. The Obama administration was trying to create a, a situation where they could put more repressive gun control on the United States and by uh, perpetrating the fallacy that Mexican drug cartels are using American-made weapons in their, in their war with the Mexican government and with each other on the, on the border. And we sustain that the, uh, the uh, expiry of the assault weapons ban in the year 2004 coincided almost exactly with the beginning of the harshest uh, harshest, the beginning of the harshest period of violence we've ever seen. That's a fallacy in itself. These are automatic weapons. They're not buying them at gun shows in Arizona. And they're not buying them at gun shops in Arizona. Those weapons are semi-automatic rifles. They're using full automatic weapons that were originally manufactured as automatic weapons. These are not conversion weapons. These are originally manufactured as automatic selective fire weapons. So, so it's not some garage conversion. They're buying these things on the foreign market. They're not coming out of the United States. And you even saw Mayor Bloomberg of New York after the Gabby Gifford shooting, which he does any time that there is a shooting, is, is he goes to states where we allow people to, to sell guns back and forth to each other at gun shows. 
and, and tries to gin up opposition to you and I selling grandpa's deer rifle at a gun show because we need to remember that guns are property you know and that as free Americans we're allowed to sell property to other people and, and all this really does is deprive the law-abiding citizen of the ability to own a gun and I think that's their end goal to tell you the truth only a small fraction of the firearms in Mexico are coming from the United States. Most of the large caliber uh, automatic weapons are coming from Central America and other parts of uh, uh, South America and the uh, Southern Hemisphere. Um, there are some guns coming from the United States. We're, we're border uh, with Mexico, so yeah, people, and we've caught people trying to smuggle guns out of Arizona, and they've been caught trying to smuggle them into Mexico. So there is some gun trafficking going on. But to blame Mexico's problems on the United States is just par for the course for President Calderon and anybody else. Everybody blames the United States, and they won't blame themselves. Uh, we have a failed narco state to our south where the cartels have corrupted the Mexican government, and there is no desire on Mexico's part to deal with this problem the way it should be dealt with. And because of that, you know, their scapegoat excuse is to blame the United States. And, and I, I think it's just, again, trying to shift blame on the United States. We're not the problem in Mexico. Mexico uh, is the problem in Mexico. The federal government's been at war with Arizona over illegal immigration for nearly a decade, um, even more so under the Obama administration. Uh, and uh, essentially what they've done is they've created a situation where we have uh, Mexican crime spilling into Arizona. Um, we've had drug cartel crime. We've had execution-style um, crime happen in, in the Phoenix area. Uh, and a lot of this is, one, the, the federal government will not defend the border, and even worse than that, now they're even arming our enemies, essentially, on the, uh, on the Mexican side of the border. You know, it, it's essentially treasonous because it, these are being used against American citizens. Uh, they've traced these even to execution-style murders of uh, Mexican attorneys uh, recently as this week. You know, so they're, create, they're, they're creating an unstable situation on the border. You know, it, it's bad enough they won't defend us against illegal immigration, but now they're essentially arming the people that profit from the drug trade on the border. Uh, they still haven't properly funded border resources. They talk about it, but in all reality, they're not, they're not serious about it. I mean, we know Fast and Furious is uh, a clear evidence of that, uh, that they're not serious. They're, they're not. After the Krentz murder uh, and the uh, Officer Brian, uh, and as an outgrowth of Fast and Furious, it's, it's, it, they're not serious. I, I, I dare say it, it's going to take, I think it would take probably an armed invasion of, say, Nogales or, or Douglas for them to probably send out the National Guard. It, it's, it's a failure. All of these incidents come from one, one source only and that is the failure of the federal government to gain operational control and protect the sovereignty of this country by securing our border. I mean, that's really the problem. Agent Terry would be alive today. Rob Krentz would be alive today if the federal government had done its job and secured this border to make sure only lawful commerce comes across our borders. And, you know, we love trading with our trading partner, Mexico. You know, I got the Port of Douglas. I got the Port of Nogales. Uh, you know, we want trade to occur, but we want lawful and legal trade. And the, the federal government has failed to encourage lawful and legal trade and, ironically, has actually encouraged illegal trade through Fast and Furious uh, because they are subsidizing illegal gun running. Uh, in the state of Arizona. So instead of securing the border and promoting legal trade, they're actually leaving the border unsecure and sort of supporting illegal trade, which is just an astonishing thing, and it, it's backwards. Did the, deputy, did the Deputy Attorney General authorize it? My guess would be no. Uh, Mr. Cole, I don't think was in the, de I, I think, I don't think he was in the department at the time that operation started. But he's been aware of it much longer been aware of it much longer than you have since you've only been aware of it a few weeks you have to understand the way in which the department operates although there are there are operations this one has become has gotten a great deal of publicity yeah they're dead Americans as a result of this failed and reckless program so uh, I would say that it hasn't gotten enough attention has it mr. Well, Attorney General it's not necessarily I mean well you've seen the Department of Justice um, which gets is politicized basically regardless of what president is in control because they work for the president essentially um, you've seen them through the uh, the use of the the fast and furious where they're actually running 
uh, they're running guns to, to foreign nationals to use in crime. It's a consolidation of power. And you're, what you're doing is you're, you're moving towards a national government and away from a federal government. And under a federal government, they had limited power. Well, of course, the attorney general should be removed from office, uh, number one. He is part of, uh, well, he's, he's the head of the agency that's basically stonewalling and covering up uh, and prohibiting uh, this investigation from being conducted through the, the, the duly constitutional committee of the U.S. Congress that has oversight of the federal government and uh, I think uh, Congressman Issa will bring some of that to light with his filing contempt charges uh, but I, th I think that there are quite a few people both in the Department of Justice, the uh, ATF and other agencies that are involved that need to be disciplined and uh, removed from their positions, terminated, fired, uh, resigned or whatever uh, and a full investigation needs to continue. I don't think you're going to get it with the current president. Well of course we've always, we've got to hold someone responsible but what I've noticed about government is it's slow and bureaucratic and by the time they're saying, oh, here's someone responsible, there'll probably be several more murders in the desert. And it may result uh, in us not knowing for a couple years until we get somebody in that office that will cooperate uh, with the investigation. I, I think it's pretty clear. Um, if, you, if you read and see, it's seen some of the testimony in uh, Chairman Ice's committee uh, that in my opinion, as a, as a member of the Arizona legislature, I believe that the federal government was trying to make our state, the state of Arizona, look bad because of our pro-Second Amendment views here. Uh, we believe in the right to keep and bear arms, and we're a very pro-gun state. And they were deliberately targeting pro-gun states, purchasing guns in pro-gun states, and smuggling guns out of our state into Mexico in, I believe, an effort to malign the state of Arizona and our, our very uh, liberal gun laws that we have here. And, uh, you know, they were going to use that as an excuse to tighten those laws against the will of the state and of the citizens of the state, one of which I had, I had mentioned earlier was an effort to limit the number of firearms you would be able to purchase in Arizona in a one-month period. And they were going to do this with any state along the border and not impose it on the rest of the country. And they were going to do it through an executive order or an agency direction rather than through a vote of the Congress. And I think that's a lot of things that... Uh, make me a little nervous when you have a bureaucrat, an unelected bureaucrat, uh, that does not go through the legislative process imposing what is clearly an infringement on individual liberty and the right to keep and bear arms through just a bureaucratic fiat. And uh, I'm glad that there were uh, groups out there that opposed that and brought it to light and defused it before it could happen. But again, I think it's an excuse. I mean, a, a lot of these uh, events that occur uh, I believe are set up to try to push an agenda and that agenda is to the agenda is control I mean the federal government's mission right now is to control control the lives of every American to the greatest degree degree possible and I believe that's what that that was about it was about you know Arizona to the federal government Arizona's out of control and they want to come in here and control they want to control our water they want to control uh, our, our laws and our policies within the state and they don't like the fat, fact that we're a uh, a very free state. Uh, we pride ourselves in trying to put as much individual liberty in the hands of the people of the state as possible and it just drives the federal government nuts. I, I believe that Eric Holder actually knew what was going on and was involved in the operation and you can tell that from some of his testimony. Um, he needs to be impeached and he needs to actually be criminally punished for what he's doing. A, a mere resignation I don't think is enough. And, and you can uh, actually see a trail of this up to the Obama White House in reality. You know. Um, yeah, you know, up, up to cabinet-level positions. Because I think this was some kind of a grand conspiracy that they dreamt up. They thought somehow that they were immune from actually getting caught and that they could actually gin up opposition to the free ownership of guns and, and make more restrictive gun laws because of this. You know, it's, um, it's Hegelian dialectic is what it's actually called. That you create, a, when you create a problem and then you ride in on the white horse as the savior to the problem. You know, in reality, you end up, you've lost your freedom from a situation that was created by government, and we need to stand up to these kind of things. Of all the scandals in Washington, none threaten the Obama administration more than Operation Fast and Furious. And while other scandals involve bribery or corruption or lying, Fast and Furious involves lives, real lives. Lives like Rob Krentz, Agent Zapata, and Agent Terry, all victims of federal gun running south of the border into Mexico. When will it end? 
And when will someone from the federal government step forward and take responsibility for the violence that has been perpetrated and done on American taxpayers' time? One thing is sure, this is a federal government that has grown out of control and seems bent on restricting the Second Amendment rights of Americans and free states like Arizona and Texas. This is Patrick Henningsen for Infowars.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News on this May 10, 2012 edition. Coming up on the show tonight. Tonight, justice will be served. Fullerton police beat Kelly Thomas to death. And now, possible charges against third officer. Alex Jones reports. Then, conflict in Syria escalates as more bombs tear through Damascus. Plus, the exclusive premiere of a new powerful documentary released by InfoWars investigative journalist Patrick Henningsen. Open Borders, special report, Fast and Furious. Premieres tonight in its entirety, only on the InfoWars Nightly News. Okay, now we're going to go to a special report by Alex Jones regarding the epidemic of police brutality in America uh, with specific reference to the Kelly Thomas beating and the latest developments in that case. Let's go to this video. Well, hey, I'm sick of playing games. Which, which, which one is it? Would you just fucking would you just A year ago, Infowars.com reported on the brutal, beating, tortured death of 37-year-old Kelly Thomas, born the same year I was. This is him before. By the way, his father's a retired police officer. and says he's ashamed of what police have turned into in this country. And here he is after. And he didn't resist anything. It was all on video from the police surveillance system. 
They beat him to death over nine minutes. Dude, please, are you please, 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 there's so much police brutality, tasering, murder, death. And let me tell you something, folks. I could barely watch this. The cops are getting off on it. They play the game of saying, don't move, while they, I'm going to taser you in the belly. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah, just come. Hard. Please. Hey, 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 come on. Please stop, dude. Please. Oh, 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 it's just like you'd imagine Jeffrey Dahmer while he was torturing people, and they just keep tasering and tasering. Oh! 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 You see, they've upped the power of tasers. They know that in the internal literature, all these systems are called less lethal. So they just train the public that they're basically able to uh, torture us and then even kill us. It's all pain, pain compliance. And they're training police and all this and just normalizing it. This is what they're going to turn loose on everybody. And they're trying to get all the cops to become these demon creatures. And it is, it is, it is really disgusting. Uh, and the culture of just worshiping police no matter what is what has allowed this. Now, they're charging one cop with second-degree murder, another with manslaughter. No, folks, this is torture 